What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're actually talking about Hellblade 2 that just came out on the Series X systems and for PC and this is a pretty interesting game. I have a lot of thoughts about it um, and some mixed feelings. I felt one way and as I kept playing the game more I totally changed my thought process on the game but we're gonna get into that but before we do make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and like this video if it's at all helpful. Okay so this game was first unveiled back in 2019 the same time that the Series X was unveiled and this game game looked phenomenal and a lot of people are looking forward to this especially if you were a fan of the previous Hellblade game you really was actually interested in playing this game and people actually been waiting for this game for years after the unveil happened in 2019 we didn't really see a lot about this game every now and then after the 2019 unveil we would see a couple of things but the studio and the game just went dark and then until recently, there was about almost no marketing until right before the game came out. And then Microsoft was doing a lot of marketing for this game. And I'm just going to run down my thoughts on some things I like and some things I really don't care for that much. Starting off with the things I love about this game. The graphics are so phenomenal in this game. This game has probably the best graphics that you'll see in any game that you can get right now today. There were a lot of times when I was playing the game and I kind of thought I was watching a movie. And that's kind of where this game is going. It's kind of giving you the thought process of you're watching a movie. And that's what it feels like. On top of that, there were times where I didn't even realize that it transitioned from actual cutscene into game. This game has such smooth transitioning and exactly zero loading screens in this game. And so it actually really immersed me more into this game on top of the fact that there is like no HUD, no anything on the screen. When you're playing this game, it is just game. Now, at no point in time, unless I changed the setting, did it actually tell me, hey, this is how you play the game, this is how you attack, this is how you dodge because nothing popped on the screen. It's just that barren. And to a degree, I kind of like it because it keeps me in that immersion. It keeps me feeling like I'm actually watching a movie, even with the black bars on the top and the bottom of the screen. And I just really enjoyed how they presented this game when it comes to graphics. It looks phenomenal. But with great graphics comes a great audio, whether it's actually the environment around you, the people talking, or the psychosis. Uh, that you're dealing with and the voices that you're hearing and it sounds really good of course if you're playing this game if you know anything about this this series you definitely want to play it with some headphones because you're really going to get that much better immersion in this game if you're actually using headphones being a person that wasn't the biggest fan of the first game i did enjoy how this game has a much bigger cast the original one really didn't have a cast um it was just the main character and that was about it in this game you do have a few more characters they don't really get that fleshed out unfortunately but it is interesting interesting to see her interact with other people because there are actual people in this game. Because there's other people, you get to see her actually talk and interact more and get a better idea of the main character's personality. And with that being the case, that mostly ends a lot of the good about this game because there's a lot more about this game that I do have a problem with. And on to something that maybe some people enjoy, some people may not enjoy, is the puzzles in this game. If you enjoyed the puzzles in the first game, you're probably not going to enjoy the puzzles in this game. The puzzles in the first game got extremely repetitive to me, especially as you got closer to the end of the game, and I got so tired. I had to force myself to get through it, but I got so tired of the puzzles. In this game, I just kind of breezed through almost every single puzzle in this game without having to do that much thinking to get around it. I don't even know if you can really call them puzzles because how simple and easy they are. Anytime that I got stumped, and I use that word lightly, it only took me a couple of minutes to actually look around and be like, oh, that's what I was overlooking. One of the huge issues about this game that is going to potentially turn a lot of people off is the fact that it's kind of a glorified walking sim. The fact that when you play this game, especially when you first start, you are gonna spend almost an hour, I believe, just moving your stick forward and doing nothing else. It is so long. There are so many parts in this game for long stretches of time that you just are holding your stick forward and not doing anything else. I would have thought that they would have gave a little bit more going on, maybe have some random enemy encounters pop up, but they didn't do that. This is something that does disappoint me from the game. No matter how good the level design is at times or how pretty things look, the fact that I'm just holding my stick for a good chunk of the game bothers me. And the problem about this is this game is somewhere around five hours long. So the fact that I spend so much time just holding the stick forward, that's most of the game. It's not even actually playing it. And that's a huge problem when it comes to this. And when you actually do get to play it, like I said, the puzzles are kind of dull. There's this one part where you're in a cave and I spent maybe somewhere around an hour just lighting torches on fire and blowing them out. And that was literally the entire level. 
I was very disappointed from the combat. I thought that it would have been a big improvement from the previous game, but the combat in this game just isn't there. You have a few different enemy types in this game, and with having a few different enemy types, you're thinking that you're actually gonna have, you know, different moves, different attacks, but that's not it. For the most part, it's block, block, swing, or block, block, roll. It's just rinse, repeat. All the enemies do the exact same move over and over. And then you can use your abilities to slow down time and it makes the match even easier. But you can quite easily figure out how to dodge and roll past characters. I almost never died in this game. And the times that I actually did was because unfortunately, and I hate to say this, the game kind of bored me to death and I started to doze off. I typically don't do that when I'm reviewing games, but this game literally was starting to bore me at some point and I actually was nodding away where I had to get up, go get some coffee and actually go wake myself up. The other thing about this game is the psychosis. Now that was a huge thing in the first game and that returns in this game, the psychosis that you're actually dealing with and the voices that you hear. And that's actually a really cool feature and it also adds more to dealing with the issues that she's having. But as far as the actual hearing the voices, sometimes they get a little irritating. And the reason why, because in the first game they did ramble off with a bunch of riddles, but in this one, they just blatantly tell you everything. Sometimes I legitimately just wanted them to shut up. They would talk over characters while they're talking. I was more interested in what the character was saying than what the psychosis was. And then on top of that, they give you all the clues to every puzzle just about. Every time you're playing, it tells you that you did something wrong, what you should have done. So it's not bad enough that the puzzles are already super easy, but then you have someone in the background whispering in your ear, literally, you did it wrong and what you need to do. And that kind of takes away from the fun of the game when you have someone telling you what to do nonstop. Here's the thing about this game. It's not that this game is a bad game. I don't really feel that it's a bad game. I feel that if you play the original and you love the original, you might have issues with this one. Now, for people like me that didn't care for the first one, maybe this may be easier entry for you because the game is so much more simplistic, but the problem is it's to the point where it's too simplistic. You'll have a better time if you go into this with the mindset of you're watching a movie than actually playing a game. Because for the most part, that's what you're doing. You're sitting there, you're just holding the stick forward and not doing anything else, and you're just listening to what's going on. And then every now and then you have those cutscenes that happen where you just sit and you're just watching the cutscene unfold until you go back to actually holding that stick in. And then maybe at some point in time, there's gonna be a fight scene where you have a little bit of fun until you realize that you're just doing the same old, same old fights. The game does get better as it goes on and as you get deeper into the game, it does seem to get more interesting. But when you potentially maybe be getting to the point where like okay this game is building up and getting better the ending just doesn't stick the landing and that's the problem with this game as a whole it just doesn't stick the landing it really makes me question what on earth was ninja theory doing for the past several years that this game has been in development obviously they was working on the graphics of the game and the cast acting you really get to see the power of unreal engine 5 in this game but unfortunately that's where most of all the development seemed to have gone to just the looks and the sounds of the game storytelling gameplay and everything else just seems to unfortunately fall to the wayside so even though this is in some respects an okay or maybe to some people a good game for the masses is not going to hit and i don't believe that every game has to go for the masses like games like hell divers for example it's so popular because it isn't for everyone and that's why i feel like it is popular i think a statement similar to like that is even on their own store or homepage. but the problem with this game is i just don't know exactly who it's for when i first got this game and as i was playing it i really enjoyed it people asked me about it i said yes this is a good game i like it better than the first one but then after really playing it for a few hours i'm like the game's over and i really didn't feel like i got much out of it ultimately this game is available on game pass if you just want to take five hours and play a pretty good okay movie game i guess you could say then there it is it's in game pass but going out and spending fifty dollars on this game i don't know if it's quite worth the fifty dollars you know what, scratch that. It's not worth the $50, unfortunately. It's worth the Game Pass subscription, and that's pretty much where it's gonna end. But anyways, what did you guys think? Did you guys enjoy this game? Have you bought it? Are you playing it? Comment that down below. I'm very interested to see what you guys thought. If this video helped you out in any way, I appreciate it if you hit the like button. Anyways, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.